This is the second part of the personal A to Z of liners and cruise ships from the 1920s to the present day. It's in five parts. The ships are shown at sea approaching or leaving harbours, docked and anchored. Some are short clips, because that's all I have, and some go on for over a minute or more. Quality varies from rather grainy, particularly the older film like this, to very sharp images taken more recently. Some film has been included before in my DVDs, but a lot has not previously been released. Most people know what a wonderful career the Canberra had. She was a lovely looking ship, but she certainly had some problems in the early days. They had to put a load of concrete in her bow to keep her steady. Funnily enough, this proved a problem when they came to run her up the beach for scrapping in 1997. Canberra also had a fire in her early days in the Mediterranean, in 1963. It was quite possible that Canberra would have been taken out of service much earlier had it not been for the Falklands War. As a result, she became the darling of all our cruise ships and went on to serve until 1997. She's seen here at the D-Day celebrations in 1994. And here we see her coming into Southampton on her last voyage. Unfortunately, it was a very foggy morning when she came in, but it cheered up later, and those that went out to see her were able to get up quite close just to say goodbye. Canton was built by Stephen of Glasgow for the P&O and served as an armed merchant cruiser and a trooper until after the war when she was then employed mainly on the Far East run. She's seen here in Aden bunkering. Canton was taken out of service in 1962 and scrapped. Cape Town Castle was delivered by Harland and Wolfe to Union Castle in 1937. She served as a troop ship from 1939 to 46 and then returned to service on the Southampton to Cape Town route. She's seen here in Cape Town Harbour 
under the famous Table Mountain. We show here some rather grainy shots around her decks, leading up to the bridge here. and the promenade deck. Some very quick shots of Carla Costa. The spirit of London is in the background. Now we have a series of shots of the Carnival Company's ships in various ports around the world. We start with Carnival Celebration seen here in Nassau. This ship is the Carnival Destiny, huge at 101,000 tons. We get up close to her on our way to do some whale watching off Dominica. The ship in the background here is Fred Olsen's Braemar. We met up again with Carnival Destiny as she entered Barbados Harbour early one morning. Later on in the day, we were able to take a closer look from the quayside. At just over 70,000 tons, Carnival Fascination is not quite as big as the Destiny. She's seen here, tied up in Nassau. Carnival's fascination left that night and the following morning Carnival Glory entered the harbour. She's one of the latest Carnival ships built by Fincantieri in 2003.
we get a closer look from Black Watch as Carnival Glory comes in to tie up. Once again, she'll only stay for one day in Nassau. Carnival Legend, at 85,920 tons, is seen here in a Caribbean harbour. She was built by Caverna Massa for the Carnival Cruise Lines. We watch as Carnival Sensation comes into Freetown in the Bahamas. Another ship built by Caverna Massa for Carnival Cruise Lines. The weather here looks idyllic, but in fact it was quite windy and we were told that there was a tropical storm in the offing. As it turned out, the storm brewed up into Hurricane Knoll, but it didn't affect the sailing that day. Carnival sensation now makes her way slowly towards her berth. The Green Goddess, as she was known, Coronia I, built in 1947 for Cunard and used mainly for cruising. In 1968, new owners called her Columbia and then she was renamed Caribia. Built by Swan Hunter for Norwegian American lines as Vistafjord, she was later sold to Cunard. She continued to sail under that name for a while. She was then called Coronia. She's since been sold to Saga in 2004 and renamed Saga Ruby. We see her first in Honfleur and then lying off Guernsey.
Carthage is seen here sailing from Hong Kong. She was built by Stephen of Glasgow for P&O and served as an armed merchant cruiser from 40 to 43 and then as a troop ship until 1947 when she returned to the Far East run. She originally had two funnels. Carthage is seen here steaming in the Mediterranean. Cathay was built by Cockrell Hoboken for Compagnie Maritime Belge as the Boudenville. She was sold to the P&O in 1961 and later sold on to Chinese interest in 1976 and renamed Shanghai. She's seen here in Naples. There was nothing gloomy about Dunedin in late February 2008 when celebrity Mercury entered harbour. Built by Mayor Wuff for celebrity cruises in 1997, she was 77,713 tons. We watch her here as she manoeuvres to turn around so that she could dock with her bow facing the sea. She was still in port when we returned from our excursions and we left first on our way to Milford Sound. P&O's 1934 Chitral served as an armed merchant cruiser during the war and then as a troop ship, after which she carried emigrants to Australia from 1948 to 1953. She's seen here in the London docks and then at Tilbury docks after the war. The next Chitral was a sister ship to Cathay, built in 1955 as Jadaville, 
for the Compagnie Maritime Belge and sold to P&O in 1961 for their Far East trade, when she was renamed Chitral. She's seen here docked in a Far East port from the decks of Cathay. We see her again as she passes close to Cathay whilst at sea. Chusan, along with her larger sister Himalaya, were built in the late 1940s by Vickers Armstrong for p &O. There was a delay in their building because preference was given to two Argentinian ships which were bringing in foreign currencies. This led to a split between Vickers Armstrong and the p &O Company. A red funneled boat followed Chusan down Southampton waters. Those on board had a marvellous opportunity to film this beautiful ship as she made her way out towards the Isle of Wight. Chusan was used mainly for the run out to the Far East, but she also made several voyages to and from Australia. Like all P&O liners of the time, she was used extensively for cruising from the mid-1960s until she was scrapped in 1973. The 1937 Cilicia was built by Fairfield Glasgow for the Anchor Line. She was later sold for use as a training ship in 1966. These black and white pictures were taken before the war. A few quick photos of City of Durban of the Elliman Line in Cape Town. Regrettably, I have no moving pictures of this ship or of any of her sisters. Now here's a change of style. We watch Club Med 2 enter Barbados Harbour. She's nearly 15,000 tons and was built by Atelier et Chantier du Havre for Club Med Cruises in 1992. It was early in the morning when she came in and the clouds were already gathering. About five minutes later we had torrential rain and it rained on and off throughout the rest of that day. We get a closer look as Club Med 2 nears her berth. There's something familiar about Columbus Sea. She was, in fact, the original 1952 Kungsholm, built by the Scheldt for Swedish America Line. In 1965, she became the 
Europa before becoming Columbus Sea. She sank in 1984 and was scrapped in 1985. She's seen here, approaching the landing stage at Tilbury. Conte Biancomano was built by Beardsmore of Glasgow for Lloyd's Zabado Genoa in 1925. She was seized by the US government in 1941 and renamed Hermitage. After the war she was returned to the Italian government and managed by Italia SAN, reverting to her original name. She's seen here in Naples. This film is of the 90,000 ton constellation sailing from Malta. She was built by Chantier de Atlantique for Celebrity Cruises in 2002. We watched earlier as Club Med 2 entered Barbados in cloudy weather. Constellation followed her in by which time it was really pouring with rain. Corral has had a number of names. She was built by Rotterdamsk Dry Dock and was Triton, Cunard Adventurer and Sunward too. At the time the film was taken she was owned by Louis Atlantic Cruises. Earlier pictures show her docked in Barcelona. These pictures are of her turning in a Tunisian port. and we get a closer picture of her as she moves towards her berth. Leaving the Panama Canal, we passed Coral Princess, tied up on the Caribbean side of the canal. She's next to Celebrity's constellation. Rather than navigate the canal, guests 
travel by bus and train down the length of the canal and back. I'm not sure whether they're too big to actually fit through the canal or whether this is a cost-cutting exercise. Certainly, the opportunity of sailing through the canal is one not worth missing. The first pictures of the Costa Alegre were as she left Buenos Aires on a cruise in the year 2000. Guided by tugs, she's making her way slowly towards the entrance to the docks, leading to the river plate. We next see her entering and dropping her anchor in a Norwegian fjord. You can see that one of her boats is already being lowered. These will be used throughout the day to allow guests to go backwards and forwards as they choose. Costa Alegre was built and launched in 1992 by Mariotti Shipyards for Costa Cruises. She's 28,430 tons. Built by Ansaldo Siestri Paneni for Italia S.A.N. in 1953, Christopher Colombo was 29,191 tons. She was a sister to the ill-fated Andrea Doria. She was sold to Venezuelan interest in 1977 and used as an accommodation ship. You see her here in Barcelona. Crystal Symphony is seen here tied up in port. She was built by Massa Yard, Finland for Crystal Cruises in 1995.
The pictures of Cunard Countess were taken while she was cruising in the West Indies. She was built by Burmeister and Wayne, Copenhagen, for Cunard and went through various changes of name after sale by Cunard. The latest name is Ruby and she was still active in 1991. Denai was originally Port Melbourne, built by Holland and Wolf in 1955. She became Starlight Princess, then Baltica and in 1996 Princess Denai. She's seen here leaving Tilbury. These shots were taken in Colombo well before the war of Dempo, a Dutch ship owned by Rotterdam Lloyd. She was nearly 17,000 tons and launched in 1930. She was sunk in 1944 by a U-boat. We can watch her here as she leaves the harbour and only guess that she was heading for a port in the Dutch East Indies. The Devonshire is seen here as a troop ship. She was launched in 1938 and was 11,275 tons, built by Fairfield of Glasgow. She later served as a school ship until 1966. Here she's in Malta Harbour during the Suez Crisis. Discovery was originally built for Princess Cruises as Island Princess, one of the love boats. She had other names as well, Island Venture, Platinum and Hyundai Panyak. She's seen here tied up in Madeira on a cruise which would take her across the Atlantic to Buenos Aires. get a good close-up look from the quayside. Donator Castle, built for Union Castle in 1936, later was sold to Ingress in 1958 and became Victoria. Later on, still, in 1975, she was sold to Chandras and became Princess Victoria. Edinburgh Castle sailed for the Union Castle Line from 1947 to 1966 when she was sold to the South African Marine Corp and renamed to Ranji. She's seen here manoeuvring in Southampton. The 
The Matson liner Lurline was built by Bethlehem SP Corporation. She served as a troop ship from 1942 to 46 and was sold to Dmitry Chandras in 1963 and renamed Elenis. As the Lurline, she would have been prominent on the San Francisco to Honolulu route. Here we watch Empire Hallidale sailing from Hong Kong. She was originally Antonio Delfino for Hamburg South America Line and renamed Sierra Nevada in 1934. She was used by the Germans during the war as an accommodation ship. She was seized by Britain in 1945 and became a troop ship. Empire Fawe was another war prize. She'd been built as Potsdam by Blommen Voss Hamburg for Hamburg America Line. She was initially used by the Germans as an accommodation ship, but they thought they might convert her to an aircraft carrier. This never happened, and she served to evacuate German troops from Eastern Territories. She was managed by p &O after the war as a troop ship. Yet another war prize, Empire Orwell, was built in 1936 as Pretoria for German East Africa lines and served as an accommodation ship and later a hospital ship. Taken by the UK at the end of the war as Empire Doomed and then renamed Empire Orwell in 1949, she was managed by the Orient Line. She was sold to Blue Funnel Line in 1958 and then to Indonesia but she had a long life as a training ship until 1987. The Canadian Pacific liner Empress of Britain was built in 1955 was later sold in 1964 to the Greek line and renamed Queen Anna Maria. She was later sold on again to Carnival and became the Carnival before being renamed again the Topaz and serving as a peace boat. She's seen here in Liverpool coming up the river before docking. The slightly larger Empress of Canada was built in 1960 by Vickers Armstrong, Newcastle, for Canadian Pacific. She too was later sold on to the Carnival Cruise Lines in 1972 and was renamed Mardi Gras. Since then she has had several names, Star of Texas, Lucky Star and finally Apollon. She was scrapped in 2003. We follow the Empress of Canada as she turns in the docks, ready to sail out of the lock and down the river on another voyage to Canada. Built by Brown on Clydebank as Duchess of Bedford for Canadian Pacific, she served as a troop ship during the war. 
After the war, she was named Empress of India and then renamed Empress of France in 1947. The film was taken in the late 1920s or early 1930s. This ship was built by Swan Hunter and Wigram as Provence for SGTM Marseille and sold to Costa Armatore in 1965, becoming the Enrico Costa. In 1984 she became Symphony and then in 2000 Aegean Spirit. Eugenio C. was another Costa Armatore ship. She was 30,567 tons and launched in 1964. Later, she was sold and became the Edinburgh Castle. Don't be confused, it was nothing to do with the Union Castle line. In 1997, she became the Big Red Boat. These pictures of her were taken in Tilbury as she leaves the Tilbury landing stage and sails down the river. The 1928 German ship Europa won the Blue Ribbon in 1930. She served as an accommodation ship during the war and was seized by the USA in 1945, becoming the French ship Liberté. She sank in 1946 and was refloated. She was scrapped in 1962. In 1952, Swedish-American line launched the Kungsholm. She was later sold to North German Lloyd in 1965 and renamed Europa. Later still, in 1981, she was sold to Costa Cruises as Columbus Sea and sank in 1984. She's seen here in Gravesend Reach as she approaches the Tilbury landing stage. We are able to get a good close-up look as she passes us on her way down the river. <laughs> 